Hello from American Losses today, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Mitzi Gaynor, the beloved actress and entertainer, has passed away at the age of 93. Known for her unforgettable roles in 1950s movie musicals, especially South Pacific 1958, Mitzi's charm and talent captivated audiences for decades. Her management team announced her peaceful passing due to natural causes, celebrating her incredible career that spanned eight decades in film, television, and on stage. Born Francesca Marlene de Chagny von Gerber in Chicago in 1931, Mitzi was destined for the spotlight. From a young age, she trained as a ballerina and pursued her dream of stardom. At just 17, she signed a contract with 20th Century Fox, where she made her film debut in My Blue Heaven, 1950. Her rise to fame included standout roles in There's No Business Like Show Business, 1954, Anything Goes, 1956, and The Joker is Wild, 1957, starring alongside legends like Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly. Mitzi's career-defining moment came when she was cast as Nellie Forbush in South Pacific, a role that solidified her as a Hollywood icon. The film became the highest-grossing movie of the year, and Mitzi's performance, including memorable songs like I'm Gonna Wash That Man Right Out of My Hair, earned her a Golden Globe nomination. In addition to her film career, Mitzi found great success on television. Between 1967 and 1978, she starred in a series of Emmy-winning TV specials that showcased her singing, dancing, and dazzling stage presence. Her work earned her six Emmys and 17 nominations, further proving her versatility as an entertainer. Throughout her life, Mitzi remained dedicated to her fans, often calling them the sunshine of my life. Her legacy as a performer continues to inspire, and her vibrant spirit will always be remembered. Lily Ledbetter, a trailblazer in the fight for gender pay equity, passed away on Saturday, October 12th, at the age of 86. Her family announced her peaceful passing due to respiratory failure, noting that she was surrounded by loved ones in her final moments. Ledbetter's journey as an advocate for equal pay began during her 19-year career at Goodyear Tire and Rubber, where she discovered she was being paid significantly less than her male counterparts for the same work. In 1999, she sued Goodyear for gender discrimination and initially won her case, being awarded $3.8 million in back pay and damages. However, the case was later overturned when Goodyear appealed, and in 2007, the Supreme Court ruled against her, stating she had missed the 180-day deadline to file her claim. Despite the setback, Ledbetter's fight for gender equality didn't end there. Her activism became a driving force behind the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Restoration Act, the first bill signed into law by President Barack Obama in 2009. This landmark legislation made it easier for workers to file lawsuits after discovering pay discrimination, ensuring others wouldn't face the same obstacles Ledbetter encountered. Former President Obama reflected on her legacy, writing on social media that Ledbetter never set out to be a household name. She simply wanted fair pay for her work. Yet her perseverance turned her into a symbol of gender equality. Obama expressed his gratitude for her friendship and advocacy, noting that her fight has inspired countless others to continue pushing for equal rights. Lily Ledbetter's life serves as a powerful reminder of the impact one person can have when they stand up for what's right. Her legacy lives on through the countless workers who benefit from the law she helped inspire. Welcome back to American Losses Today. In today's episode, we reflect on the extraordinary life of Ethel Kennedy, the widow of Robert F. Kennedy, and the matriarch of one of America's most influential families. Ethel Kennedy passed away on October 10th at the age of 96 from complications related to a recent stroke. Her legacy is a testament to resilience, faith, and family, traits that guided her through the many personal tragedies she faced over the course of her lifetime. 
Born on April 11, 1928, into the affluent Skockel family, Ethel grew up in Greenwich, Connecticut, as the sixth of seven children. Her father, George Skockel, founded Great Lakes Carbon Corporation, creating a life of privilege and opportunity for the family. It was during a ski trip in 1945 that Ethel met Robert Bobby Kennedy, the brother of her college roommate, Jean Kennedy. Though Bobby initially dated her older sister, Patricia, it was Ethel who eventually captured his heart, leading to their marriage in 1950. Together, they had 11 children, raising them in a lively, bustling home known as Hickory Hill in McLean, Virginia. While Bobby pursued a career in law and later became attorney general under his brother, President John F. Kennedy, Ethel remained a devoted wife and mother, supporting her husband's ambitions with grace and determination. However, their lives were forever altered in 1968 when Bobby was assassinated after winning the California Democratic primary while running for president. At the time, Ethel was pregnant with their youngest daughter, Rory. Ethel's life was marked by incredible loss. In addition to her husband's assassination, she outlived two of her children, David, who died of a drug overdose in 1984, and Michael, who passed away in a skiing accident in 1997. The tragedies continued with the deaths of her parents in a plane crash, her nephew, John F. Kennedy Jr. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we remember veteran actor Nicholas Pryor, whose remarkable career spanned over six decades in film, television, and theater. Pryor passed away on October 7, 2024, at the age of 89, following a battle with cancer. His contributions to the world of entertainment have left an indelible mark, particularly in his role as Professor Victor Collins on the iconic soap opera General Hospital and its spin-off, Port Charles, where he appeared in over 300 episodes. Pryor was a versatile talent, known for his ability to bring depth and nuance to every character he portrayed. His filmography is filled with notable roles, including his unforgettable performance as Tom Cruise's father in the 1983 comedy Risky Business, and as the father of Robert Downey Jr.'s character in the 1987 drama Less Than Zero. Pryor also delivered a chilling performance in Damien, Omen 2, 1978, showcasing his range across various genres, from horror to drama. John Lindstrom, Pryor's co-star on Port Charles, shared a heartfelt tribute, calling him an actor's actor and an exceptional friend. Lindstrom praised Pryor not only for his incredible body of work, but also for being a mentor, confident, and father figure to many beyond the screen. Pryor's impact on his fellow actors and his audience was profound, and he was beloved for his quick wit and humor, traits that his close friends cherished. Pryor's legacy is one of dedication, artistry, and grace, with a career that took him from Broadway to Hollywood. He leaves behind his wife Christina, daughter Stacy, and grandchildren Gus and Avril, who were by his side in his final moments. As we reflect on Nicholas Pryor's life, we celebrate a career that touched the hearts of many, and a man whose warmth and generosity will not be forgotten. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we honor the life and legacy of Sissy Houston, an iconic gospel singer and matriarch of one of music's most renowned families. Sissy passed away on October 7, 2024, at the age of 91, while under hospice care for Alzheimer's disease. Her remarkable career, which spanned over seven decades, left an indelible mark on the world of gospel, R&B, and popular music. Sissy's profound influence extended beyond her voice to the countless lives she touched through her music, family, and faith. Born in Newark, New Jersey, Sissy began her career in 1938 as part of the Drinkard Four a group formed with her siblings. Later, she co-founded The Sweet Inspirations, providing backup vocals for legendary artists like Otis Redding, Elvis Presley, and the Jimi Hendrix Experience. These early years set the foundation for her career, but it was her solo work that would cement her as a gospel icon. In 1970, she released her debut LP presenting Sissy Houston, showcasing her powerful voice with hits like Be My Baby and I'll Be There. Sissy's gospel roots were never far behind, earning her two Grammy Awards for her albums Face to Face, 1996, and He Leadeth Me, 1998. Sissy's influence on music went beyond her personal achievements. 
She was also the mother of Whitney Houston, one of the greatest vocalists of all time. Whitney's soaring voice was a reflection of Sissy's own powerful vocal range, and their connection was immortalized through their duet, I Know Him So Well, in 1987. Sissy's influence on her daughter was undeniable, and her pain over Whitney's struggles with substance abuse and untimely death was deeply felt. In her memoir, Remembering Whitney, Sissy wrote candidly about her heartbreak, revealing the complexities of their relationship and the deep love she held for her daughter. Sissy Houston was more than a talented singer. She was a devoted mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. In today's episode, we honor Pete Rose, the legendary Cincinnati Reds player whose on-field brilliance was overshadowed by a lifetime ban from Major League Baseball for betting on games. Rose passed away at his home in Las Vegas on September 30th, 2024, at the age of 83. Known as Charlie Hustle, Rose's relentless drive and competitive spirit made him one of the most iconic and polarizing figures in baseball history. His remarkable achievements on the field remain a cornerstone of his legacy, even as his controversies continue to spark debate. Pete Rose was born on April 14, 1941, in Cincinnati, Ohio, and grew up to represent his hometown team, the Cincinnati Reds, beginning in 1963. That year, he was awarded the National League Rookie of the Year, a sign of the greatness to come. Over the course of his 24-year career, Rose was selected for the All-Star Game 17 times and won three World Series championships, two with the Reds in 1975 and 1976, and one with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1980. His relentless work ethic and versatility allowed him to play almost every position on the field, and he quickly became a fan favorite. Rose earned the nickname Charlie Hustle for his gritty, aggressive style of play and unmatched dedication to the game. A defining moment of his career came in 1985, when Rose broke Ty Cobb's long-standing record for the most hits in Major League Baseball history, finishing with 4,256 hits, a record that still stands today. Rose's achievements on the field were legendary, and his love for the game was undeniable. Despite his success, Rose's career took a sharp downturn in 1989 when he was banned from baseball for betting on games while serving as the manager of the Reds. Although he initially denied the allegations, Rose later admitted to gambling on baseball, including betting on his own team. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends, where we honor those who have made an indelible impact on the world. Today, we reflect on the life of NBA Hall of Famer and global icon, Dikembe Mutombo, who passed away at the age of 58 from brain cancer. A towering presence both on and off the court, Mutombo's legacy extends far beyond his accolades in basketball. Known for his signature finger wag and his dominance as one of the best defensive players in NBA history, Mutombo's contributions to the sport and his humanitarian efforts left an everlasting mark on the global community. Dikembe Mutombo was born on June 25, 1966, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. His journey to the NBA began when he moved to the United States to attend Georgetown University, where his exceptional shot-blocking ability and defensive prowess first garnered national attention. In 1991, he was drafted fourth overall by the Denver Nuggets, and from that point, his 18-year career in the NBA cemented him as one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Mutombo earned eight NBA All-Star selections and was named the NBA Defensive Player of the Year four times, a testament to his dominance on the court. He still holds the second most blocked shots in NBA history, a record that speaks to his influence as a game-changing defender. However, Mutombo's impact stretched far beyond the basketball court. As the NBA's first global ambassador, Mutombo embraced his role as a humanitarian using his platform to uplift communities, particularly in his home country of the Congo. His charitable work, including building hospitals and schools, demonstrated his deep commitment to improving the lives of others. He believed in the power of basketball to unite people and create opportunities, and through his efforts, countless individuals around the world benefited from his generosity and compassion. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we remember a true icon of American culture, someone whose voice, lyrics, and presence left an indelible mark on both the music and film industries, Chris Christopherson. 
A country music legend, actor, and songwriter, Christofferson passed away peacefully at the age of 88, surrounded by his family in his home in Maui on September 28. Born in Brownsville, Texas, Christofferson's life was as colorful as the music he created. From a young age, he was captivated by the power of country music, but his journey to stardom took a unique path. Before becoming a household name in the entertainment industry, Christofferson was a Rhodes Scholar, an accomplished athlete, and a U.S. Army helicopter pilot. Yet despite his impressive academic and military achievements, it was Nashville and its thriving music scene that truly ignited his passion. In the mid-60s, he made the brave decision to leave a promising career in the Army to pursue music full-time, a move that would change not just his life, but the entire landscape of country music. Chris Christofferson's career was a blend of personal storytelling and gritty authenticity, with songs that resonated deeply across generations. Hits like Me and Bobby McGee, Sunday Morning Coming Down, and Help Me Make It Through the Night became anthems covered by legends like Janis Joplin and Johnny Cash. He wasn't just a musician, he was a poet, an artist whose lyrics captured the raw essence of life's highs and lows. In 1971, he won his first Grammy for Best Country Song, a testament to his ability to craft songs that speak directly to the heart. Beyond music, Christofferson made waves in Hollywood. His breakout role came in the 1976 film A Star is Born, where he starred opposite Barbara Streisand as the self-destructive rock star John Norman Howard. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. In today's heartfelt episode, we pay tribute to a beloved actor whose legacy on daytime television spanned nearly four decades. Drake Hogeston, a name synonymous with Days of Our Lives, captivated audiences as John Black for 38 years. He passed away on September 28, 2024, at the age of 70, just one day shy of his 71st birthday. His passing comes after a brave and determined battle against pancreatic cancer, one that he fought with the same strength and resilience that made him a fan favorite on screen. Drake Hogeston's story is one of perseverance and passion. Born in Fort Wayne, Indiana, he initially sought a career in professional baseball, even signing with the New York Yankees and playing for one of their farm teams. However, an injury in 1977 ended his sports dreams, but that moment of loss became the catalyst for his acting career. His first major role came in the early 1980s on the CBS series Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, but it was in 1986 that he truly made his mark, joining Days of Our Lives as a mysterious character known as The Pawn. Over time, his character evolved into the iconic John Black, a role that would earn him a place in the hearts of soap opera fans everywhere. John Black's love story with Marlena Evans, played by Deidre Hall, became one of the most beloved and enduring relationships in soap opera history. Their on-screen chemistry and dramatic storylines kept viewers hooked for decades. In 2005, their portrayal of John and Marlena earned them the Soap Opera Digest Award for Favorite Couple. But Drake wasn't just a star on screen. Off screen, he was equally admired for his kindness, generosity, and dedication to his craft. Hogeston's life was also defined by the love he shared with his family. He married his childhood sweetheart, Victoria Post, in 1986, and together they raised four children, daughters Whitney, Alexandra, and Rachel, and son Ben. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. In today's episode, we remember and honor the talented actor John Ashton, best known for his iconic role in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. John Ashton passed away on September 26, 2024, at the age of 76, following a courageous battle with cancer. His manager confirmed the news, marking a significant loss for the entertainment industry and all those who cherished his work. Born in 1948 in Springfield, Massachusetts, Ashton began his career in theater, touring with various companies across the United States and the United Kingdom. His passion for acting led him to Los Angeles, where he transitioned to television, making dozens of appearances on iconic series from the 1970s through the 2000s. Notable shows in his extensive resume include Kojak, Columbo, MASH, Starsky and & Hutch, and Law and & Order, Special Victims Unit. He also had a memorable recurring role in the legendary soap opera Dallas, playing the character Willie Joe Gar. Ashton's most celebrated work came in 1984 when he starred alongside Eddie Murphy in Beverly Hills Cop, 
portraying the tough and determined police officer, John Taggart. His performance resonated with audiences, leading him to reprise the role in the subsequent sequels, including Beverly Hills Cop 2 in 1987 and the most recent installment, Beverly Hills Cop Axel F., released in 2024. John Ashton's ability to bring humor and depth to his characters made him a beloved figure in the world of comedy and action films. In addition to his film work, Ashton starred in several other notable movies, including Midnight Run alongside Robert De Niro, Little Big League, Some Kind of Wonderful, She's Having a Baby, and Gone Baby Gone. He also hosted The Ashton and Davis Show on 870 ESPN Radio in Colorado, sharing his love of sports and connecting with fans beyond the screen. Outside of acting, Ashton was an avid golfer, continually seeking ways to enhance his game. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we remember the life of Catherine Crosby, an actress and beloved widow of the legendary Bing Crosby, who passed away on September 20th, 2024, at the age of 90. Publicist Harlan Bowl confirmed that Catherine died of natural causes at her home in Hillsboro, California, surrounded by her family. Her passing marks the end of an era, as she was not only a talented actress, but also an integral part of Hollywood history. Born Olive Catherine Grandstaff, Catherine began her career in the early 1950s, appearing in uncredited roles in several films, including The Phoenix City Story and Five Against the House. However, it was her performances in films like Mr. Corey opposite Tony Curtis, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, Anatomy of a Murder alongside Jimmy Stewart, and The Big Circus that showcased her talent and earned her recognition in the industry. Catherine continued to work steadily throughout the late 1950s, appearing in more films and establishing herself as a prominent actress. In 1957, Catherine's life changed dramatically when she married Bing Crosby, who was 30 years her senior. Their love story began when they met during interviews on the set of Bing's 1954 film, White Christmas. The couple married in Las Vegas, and over the next few years they welcomed three children, Harry, Mary, and Nathaniel. Catherine remained by Bing's side until his passing in 1977, after which she largely retired from acting, making her final appearance in the 2010 film Queen of the Lot, featuring her daughter Mary. In addition to her film career, Catherine hosted a Northern California morning talk show on KPIX-TV in the 1970s, where her charm and stories captivated audiences. She also dedicated herself to teaching and became a registered nurse in 1963. Catherine authored a memoir titled My Life with Bing, published in 1983, which offered a glimpse into her life with the legendary crooner. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we honor the life and legacy of Tito Jackson, a beloved member of the iconic family band The Jackson Five, who passed away on September 15, 2024, at the age of 70. Tito's nephew, Siggy Jackson, confirmed the sad news, noting that Tito suffered an apparent heart attack. Just days before his passing, Tito was performing with his brothers Jackie and Marlon as the Jacksons, showcasing his enduring passion for music and his family's legacy. Born into one of the most famous families in music history, Tito was an original member of the Jackson Five, a group that redefined pop music in the 1970s with hits like I Want You Back, ABC, and I'll Be There. The band's impact was profound, earning them a spot in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1997 and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Tito's talent shone brightly not only as part of the ensemble but also in his solo career, where he released two studio albums, Tito Time in 2016 and Under Your Spell in 2021. In recent years, Tito embraced the blues genre, performing and touring internationally. He found joy in the blues, crediting it as the music that ignited his passion for the guitar. Tito had a deep appreciation for the genre, and in a 2021 interview with Blues Blast magazine, he expressed his desire to return to the stage, sharing, I wanted to play some music, and I wanted to be on stage again. His last single, Love One Another, released in 2021, reflected his commitment to spreading messages of love, unity, and kindness, particularly in the wake of the pandemic. In the music video, family members and celebrities came together, illustrating the collaborative spirit that characterized Tito's life. Tito's dedication to his family was evident in all aspects of his life. 
He is survived by his three sons, Taj and Terrell, who formed the band 3T, a group he managed. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today, we mourn the passing of Chad McQueen, the son of the legendary racing and acting icon Steve McQueen. Chad, known for his roles in films like The Karate Kid, passed away on September 11, 2024, at the age of 63, in Palm Springs, California. His family shared the heartbreaking news in a statement posted to their social media accounts, expressing their deep sorrow and remembrance of his extraordinary life. Chad McQueen captured audiences with his portrayal of Dutch in the classic 1984 film The Karate Kid, and he reprised this iconic role in The Karate Kid Part Two. His acting career included notable films such as Death Ring, Firepower, and Red Line. However, in the 1990s, Chad shifted his focus to a career in sports car racing, a passion that allowed him to honor his father's legacy. Despite stepping away from the film industry, he made a final appearance in 2001's Fall, The Price of Silence, showcasing his multifaceted talent and dedication to his craft. In 1993, Chad married Jeannie Galbraith, and together they raised two children, Chase and Madison. In their tribute, they reflected on Chad's unwavering commitment to family, stating, His remarkable journey as a loving father, along with his unwavering commitment to our mother, truly exemplified a life filled with love and dedication. They further emphasized how Chad's passion for racing not only highlighted his exceptional talent, but also served as a way to carry forward the values instilled in him by his father. Chad shared a close bond with Steve McQueen, who passed away from cancer in 1980 at the age of 50. In interviews, Chad expressed how his father's values influenced him profoundly. A lot of my values are like my dad's, he shared, noting the depth of understanding that came with age regarding his father's distrust of people. In 2010, Chad founded McQueen Racing, a company dedicated to building custom high-performance cars. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today, we honor the extraordinary life and career of James Earl Jones, the legendary voice behind iconic characters such as Darth Vader from Star Wars and Mufasa from The Lion King. Jones passed away on September 9, 2024, at the age of 93, in his home in Dutchess County, New York, leaving behind a profound legacy in the world of film and theater. He is survived by his son, Flynn Earl Jones, and is remembered fondly by fans and colleagues alike. Born in Arkabutla, Mississippi, and raised in Michigan by his grandparents, Jones faced significant challenges in his early years, including a debilitating stutter that kept him in silence for eight years. He later shared, I stuttered badly, and so I retreated and lived in a world of silence rather than speak. With the encouragement of a supportive teacher, he discovered the power of the written word and poetry, which became his sanctuary. This experience fueled his passion for acting and storytelling, leading him to the stage and screen. Jones initially studied pre-med at the University of Michigan before joining the Army. His career took a pivotal turn with his groundbreaking role in the play The Great White Hope, which debuted in 1967 and earned him a Tony Award for Best Actor in 1969. The play was later adapted into a film, bringing him even greater acclaim with a Golden Globe win and an Academy Award nomination, making him the second black actor nominated for an Oscar after Sidney Poitier. Throughout his career, Jones's profound voice and commanding presence graced both theater and film, including memorable performances in Coming to America, Field of Dreams, The Sandlot, and The Hunt for Red October. Perhaps most famously, James Earl Jones lent his iconic voice to Darth Vader in the Star Wars saga creating a character that would become synonymous with menace and authority. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today, we honor the late rapper Rich Homie Quan, born to Quance Devante Lamar, who passed away on September 5, 2024, at just 34 years old in his Atlanta home. His untimely death has left fans and fellow artists in shock, and the Fulton County Medical Examiner is still determining the cause of death. Rich Homie Kwan burst onto the music scene in 2012, quickly capturing attention with his unique sound. He gained major recognition in 2013 with his hit single, Type of Way, showcasing his ability to blend catchy hooks with relatable themes. Collaborating on YG's My N, featuring Jeezy, further solidified his place in hip-hop. 
Throughout his career, he released popular tracks like Walk Through, Flex, Ooh, 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 and Ride Out with Kid Ink and Tyga. In March 2018, he launched his debut album, Rich as in Spirit, which peaked at number 32 on the Billboard 200 chart. His collaborations with artists such as Rick Ross, Future, and Two Chains helped him connect with a wide audience, leaving a lasting impact on the rap scene. Beyond his music, Lamar was a devoted father to four sons. Following the news of his passing, fellow artists expressed their condolences and shared memories of him. Boosie Badass acknowledged the rumors surrounding his death, sharing heartfelt tributes that highlighted their bond. Rich Homie Kwan's journey in hip-hop and his connection with fans remind us of the lasting impact of music. As we celebrate his life, let's cherish the joy he brought through his artistry. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Tribute to American Legends. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories honoring those who have shaped our world. Are you curious about how Simon Cowell, the man behind some of the biggest talents in the world, overcame a serious health scare and bounced back stronger than ever? In this video, we dive into the truth behind Simon's recent absence from Britain's Got Talent, his battle with a life-changing injury, and how he's now using a unique, celeb-approved workout routine to stay in top shape. You'll hear how Simon has ditched painkillers, transformed his lifestyle, and what those funky orange glasses are really all about. Trust us, there's more to the story than you think. Stay tuned to find out how one of TV's toughest judges is taking control of his health and how it could inspire you too. Watch until the end to discover Simon's surprising secrets to a healthier, happier life. Simon Cowell recently took to Instagram to clear up rumors surrounding his health after he missed filming for the new season of Britain's Got Talent. Contrary to reports of a mystery illness, Simon explained that he had been dealing with a migraine caused by the bright studio lights, which forced him to skip two auditions. Assuring fans, he added, Next week we are filming BGT in Manchester. I look forward to seeing you then. At 64, Simon appears to be feeling much better, and his signature orange-tinted glasses are part of his solution to the lighting issue. Despite dealing with some health challenges in recent years, such as his 2020 back injury, Simon seems to be in better shape than ever. According to People, Simon has made his health a top priority, incorporating reformer Pilates into his routine, which is known for being a favorite of other celebrities like Jennifer Aniston and Harry Styles. Pilates has become a key part of his daily regimen, along with regular walking and other low-impact exercises that help strengthen his back and maintain his overall fitness. Celebrity personal trainer Scott Harrison explained that Pilates, along with other low-impact exercises, is excellent for improving posture, strength, and flexibility. Pilates focuses on strengthening the core muscles, which helps improve overall stability and posture. It's an investment in your future health, Scott shared. He also emphasized how Pilates helps elongate and stretch the muscles, preventing injuries and enhancing mobility as we age which is particularly important for someone like Simon, who previously suffered a serious back injury. In 2020, Simon experienced a severe accident while riding his electric bike, which resulted in three spinal fractures and required surgery to insert a metal rod into his back. Since then, he has turned to low-intensity exercises like Pilates to help him rebuild strength without risking further injury. Scott highlighted that low-intensity workouts are popular among celebrities because they are easier on the body, reduce the risk of injury, and promote relaxation, ideal for those with high-stress lifestyles. In September 2023, during a red carpet event, Simon revealed that he made a conscious choice to avoid relying on painkillers after his surgery. He shared, I was on a lot of painkillers, but I got off them really quickly. I didn't want to go down that road. Instead, Simon's focus has been on a long-term recovery plan through exercise, helping him rebuild his strength and stay in peak health without the need for medication.